Now I'm going to show you guys some real cool stuff. The gallery wrap. It's a canvas fine art print where we print extra image on the side and it wraps around the side of the stretcher bar and onto the back. It gives a framed finished look with a canvas, museum quality canvas, but has a great finished frame look. Of course they look better in frame, but this is a really great option. You'll like this technique. Okay, what is a gallery wrap? A gallery wrap is an image printed on canvas that has been prepared with extra borders which wrap around the sides and back of the stretcher bar. Traditional gallery wrap images are mirrored, meaning the four edges of the actual image are copied and flipped over as part of the digital image file to be printed. Why do the gallery wrap technique? Well, a finished gallery wrap image can hang as is without requiring a frame. Thus, it is an inexpensive, classy way to display artwork. Here's some examples of one of my studio walls. It's an example showing a wide selection of my images, all gallery wrapped. They have a great presentation, they have a great look to them. They're museum quality if they're done on a gesso bar. So this is an example of the wall that I have in my studio. What I found out is if you don't show your work, if you don't have your work printed and hung up, you won't sell it. It's just like if you want to sell big pieces, you need to print big pieces. If you don't show big pieces, you won't sell big pieces. Here I'm going to show you Here I'm going to show you a gallery wrap versus a standard stretch. The top stretcher bar here is a 7/8 standard stretch, staples on one side. Okay? So a, a standard stretch has a staple stapled on the side. The next one in the middle there is a 7 8 gallery wrap with staples on the back. So a gallery wrap means that the staples are going to be on the back and the edges can become part of the finished product. The bottom one is an inch and a half gallery wrap stapled on the back again. So a gallery wrap versus a standard stretch. Standard stretch is stapled on the side. A gallery wrap is stapled on the back and it can be done in different thicknesses. Is the math of a gallery wrap easy? Yeah! First you need to know the actual image size. For this example we're going to do 24 by 24. Next you need to know the, your depth of your stretcher bar and a common depth is inch and a half and we we'll use that in our example. The last measurement you need to prepare the files, how much canvas you need to wrap around the back and allow the stretching device to grab and pull the canvas tight. For this example we'll also use inch and a half. So you're going to have an inch and a half on the back, an inch and a half on the side of the right side, then your 24 inch of your image area, then an inch and a half on the left and an inch and a half on the back. So on each side you need six inches. So put simply one and a half four times equals six, so you just add six inch to each dimension. So for a 24 by 24 finished print size, we're going to add six inches to both dimensions to get a printed canvas size of 30 by 30. Your printed canvas is going to be 30 by 30, but once you wrap it around the bars, you're going to have a finished print size of 24 by 24. Here's an example of the gallery wrap and how it works. Where these white lines are in this image is where my mirror happened. Okay, This is called a mirror edge gallery wrap. So in between the white lines is 24 by 24. To the right of the right white line is 3 inch and to the left of the line is 3 inch and that's done on all four sides. So now let me show you an example of how we do that in Photoshop. We're going to open up an image we're going to go first image size it. Okay? This one isn't exactly 24 by 24. It's real close, but if I put 24 in, the other dimension doesn't work, so I'm just going to make it, I'm going to force it to be 24 by 24 for it, it's exact. It's only changing it by a real minor amount, so it's fine. Okay, so now that we have it changed 24 by 24, my next step is my canvas size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave relative on and I just type in 6 and type in 6 and it's going to add 6 inches on right, six total of 6 inches for right and left, a total of 6 inches for top and bottom. If I turn relative off, it adds the 6 inches to it. Okay? So I like relative on because I don't have to do the math. Okay? So now it added 3 inch to each side, a total of 6 inch right and left, 3 inch in top and bottom, a total of 6 inch for top and bottom. Next we're going to grab our rectangular, rectangular marquee tool, second tool down on the toolbar. We're going to select the area that we want to fill the mirror with. We're going to move that over what we're going to fill it with. 
Okay, and the first two steps I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the drop-down menu. So we're going to go edit, copy. We're going to copy this area, and then we're going to go edit, paste. We're going to paste that area. And notice on the layer palette, it actually made a layer of that strip. Okay. Next, I'm going to take and I'm going to transform that. So I'm going to go to edit, free transform. I'm going to grab the handle in the free transform and flip it over. And then I'm going to apply that either by hitting this check mark up here or hitting return. That applied that mirror now to that side. It is a layer now, so I need to flatten that. So I, use, I like to use merge down because I like the keyboard shortcut of command E, but you're just flattening the image is what you're doing. Okay, we're going to do it again. We're going to select the area we want to fill. We're going to move it to the area we're going to fill it from, which we're going to mirror right from the edge next to it. Okay, we're going to edit, copy that. We're going to edit, paste that. And then we're going to edit, free transform that. And then you're going to grab your handle and rotate it to the other side, which gives you your mirror. We apply that transformation either by hitting return or the check mark. And then notice that's a layer. So I'm going to go layer, merge down, flatten that, that area out. Now I'm going to show you the keyboard shortcut. Since we do hundreds of these every day, we take and use the keyboard shortcut. So your first thing is you select the area you want to fill with a mirror, move your selection to what you're going to fill it with. Okay. Now I'm going to go Command J, which means jump this selection to a new layer. So notice that made a new layer. Then I'm going to go Command T to transform it. I'm going to grab the handle and move it up. And then I'm going to apply that. Okay. And then I'm going to go Command E to merge that down, to flatten that. And then in this next one, I'm going to show you an example that happens on a regular basis. Let's say that you make your selection and then you move it up, but you're not real accurate with how you moved it up. And we're going to go Command J, Command T. Now when I do my transform, it makes a white line there. That's really important. That does not happen because that white line would be really obnoxious to be on the front of your frame right where the fold is. So what we're going to do is just back up in history. We're going to go back to our marquee tool. And then when you're making, when you're moving your marquee tool, make sure that, that some white line doesn't show down below. So see how there's white down below there now? We want to make sure you're up high enough that you do not see a white line, okay? Now we're going to use our keyboard shortcut, which is Command J to jump to new layer. And notice that made me a new layer. Command T to transform it. I'm going to grab that handle, pull it down. And now I'm going to go ahead and apply that transform. And then Command E means merge that layer down. And then I'll show you my naming convention. My naming convention, I have the name of my piece and what version I'm working on with it. And then I'm going to add the size. Notice on this one here, I added the size, 24 by 24. And then I say GW6 means it's a gallery wrap with a 6 inch on it. And that would be my naming procedures. So you can see how easy it is now to do a mirrored gallery wrap. Thanks. Come around for some more tips. Bye.